Some useful ideas for working with compound fractions. Any fraction can be multiplied by 1. 1 is any expression divided by itself. And if you multiply a fraction by its denominator, you can eliminate the denominator. It's also helpful to remember, factored form is best. So unless you need to expand a product, it's best to leave it in factored form. So let's try to find this limit. So we note that our denominators are 3x minus 1 and 5. So if we multiply by 5 times 3x minus 1, the product of the two denominators, we can eliminate them both. So we'll take our expression, multiply by 5 times 3x minus 1 in numerator and denominator, and distribute. Now, since we multiplied by 5 times 3x minus 1 to eliminate the denominators 5 and 3x minus 1, we should simplify the expressions with those denominators, but we'll leave the main denominator in factored form. So multiplying out our numerator and simplifying it. Now, at our limit value x equal to 2, the numerator is 0, so we know it has a factor of x minus 2. In other words, it has to be x minus 2 times something, and that something works out to be negative 3. Now, numerator and denominator have a common factor of x minus 2, so we can remove the common factor, and the algebraic expression is to find it x equals 2, so the limit is the function value, which will be or let's find this limit. At x equals negative 1, the numerator and denominator are both equal to 0, and since we have a compound fraction, let's multiply through by the denominators. Now the best choice would be to multiply by x squared, which is the least common denominator. But let's use x times x squared, or x cubed, that's the product of the denominators. To emphasize an important point, you don't have to make the best choice as long as you make a choice. So, multiplying numerator and denominator by x cubed. And again, the purpose was to get rid of the denominators x and x squared, so we'll multiply those terms out, but we'll leave the denominator of the main fraction in factored form. And we could simplify our rational expression more. The numerator has a factor of x, so we could remove it and remove the common factors, and our equality exists as long as x is not equal to 0. Now, since we're concerned about the limit as x approaches negative 1, we only care about values close to x equals negative 1, so we can ignore what happens at x equals 0, and in the limit, replace the one expression with the other. So, at x equals negative 1, the denominator is 0, so it must have a factor of x plus 1, and the other factor is x minus 1. We can, again, remove the common factor, and at x equals negative 1, the algebraic expression is defined, and so the limit is the function value, which will be